A lot of people call this white privilege, and when you say those two words, it just is like a fuse goes off for a lot of white people because they don't want somebody telling them to check their privilege. And so I know that you and I both have struggled in these days with, hey, yeah. if the phrase is the trip up, let's get over the phrase and let's get down to the heart. Sure. Let's get down to what then do you want to call it? And I think maybe a great thing for me is to call it white blessing. He needs some milk. Yo, YouTube, YouTube. What's going on? Trey back again. Teach you all with another wonderful video. Hope you all had a great weekend. My weekend was very great. You know, we have a story, yes, coming out of Georgia, by way of Atlanta and of Georgia. I am so sorry, but it had to be you all. You know, I thought it would have been Florida today, but evidently Florida is going through enough already. But we have a pastor who decides to call white privilege, white blessing. You know me. I mean, you can look and tell. I'm not one for racism. I don't uh, vouch for that. I don't really uh, co-sign to none of that. And one thing I will say, there is good and bad in everyone. And I'm also say this. You know, it may make some people mad, but I don't give a damn. This is my platform. This is my channel. But I will say this. Not all white people are racist. You got some racist white people. You got some people that are white that are not racist. So let's just get that straight also. Just like you got some Black people who like black people, you got some black people who can't stand black people. It may offend some of you all, but the truth is the truth. But one thing that cannot be refuted is the fact that this country was built off the back of slaves and the lesser class people. Let's just be for real. Not only black people, but also other minorities of people. If you would go back and check your history. But for this pastor, yes, a pastor out of what? Passion City Church in Atlanta. Whatever the hell that is, Passion City Church. Where they getting these church names from? And the pastor go by the name of Louis, not Louis Armstrong, Louis Gigolo or Louis Gigolo, whichever name that he may prefer. But he had the nerve, the audacity of this ninja to sit up there and say, white blessing, white blessing, white privilege was basically a blessing. This is exactly what he said. He said, you know, I'm going to skip real quick. He said, not seeking to refer to slavery as a blessing, but that we are privileged because of the curse of slavery. So you're basically privileged off of bloodshed and torture and pain somebody else suffer, which we already know. I mean, you got plenty of plantations in the South and some kind of up North and everywhere else where you still have them basically still having millions of dollars and all that were built off the back of slaves, those plantations. But he goes on to say, and calling it a privilege, benefit, blessing, word choice wasn't great. Then why did you say it, Pastor? You should know better. Then he said, trying to help us see society is built on the dehumanization of others my apology, I feel. We already know all that, but the point of view would say that basically that it's a blessing, the fact that you was able to grow up in Atlanta and you was able to have these so-called inherent benefits is troubling. And the fact that you probably be a man of the cloth, a man of God, that you would sit up there and say that. That's why you people have to be careful who you listen to. Now, I don't expect you to listen to everything I say. I don't expect you to agree with everything I say. But one thing about me, you know, I'm going to do my best to call it down the middle. And if I can't do that, I will just leave the topic alone. But one thing I will say is this right here. You can't sit up here and say yellow and then turn around and say you mean red. You can't sit up here and say brown and say you mean black. We heard the words that came right out your mouth like Chris Tucker said on Rush Hour. But anyway, I'm not going to tear it too long like they say in church. I'm going to read a quick snippet from this story so we get a better understanding. And I'm going to get my opinion. All of it, surely, as we go. Georgia Pastor. Out of all places, Georgia, my people in Georgia are like, damn, draws backlash after suggesting slavery was a white blessing. Yes, he said it was a blessing. It's not a privilege. He said now it's a blessing that all these millions of people had to suffer. Thousands upon thousands had to die. And you know, you had whole cities burned down, Tulsa, Rosewood. You had all this other stuff going on. And I don't like bringing up this stuff right here. But since the pastor want to put it out there, let's put it out there. But anyway. A Georgia pastor is apologizing. No, don't apologize. Stand on what you mean. Stand on what you say. A Georgia pastor is apologizing for comments he made doing what was billed as an open and honest conversation about how racism has plagued the Peach State's capital. How about how racism has plagued this whole country and also this whole world? Let me tell you something about this whole world. Not only is it racist over here in America, but it's racist in other parts of the world. Just because you don't see it as open like you do over here does not mean it don't exist. It does exist. But anyway, Louis Gigolo or Louis Gigolo, whichever his name, probably Gigolo, pastor of Passion City Church in Atlanta, was met with criticism this week after citing the blessing of slavery. 
How in the hell you something they call slavery a blessing? You a power, you supposed to know better. You supposed to go in God. You supposed to seek God and ask him to give you the words to say. Somebody else gave you these words. I think it was Beelzebub, Lucifer, the devil himself. But anyway, he said, the blessing of slavery for providing the framework for the privileges white Americans enjoy today. Why in the hell? Why in the hell are we still bringing this up? When are we going to find a solution to the problem? When are we going to deal with really how can we cure this? How can we make this right? Because us talking about slavery and uh, what happened, it's not going to do anything but incite more anger, more rage, and make people want to get revenge. Why not sit up here and find a solution? And how about paying people reparations? I know a lot of people don't want to talk about that, but how about paying people reparations? I mean, you pay reparations to the Japanese when you bombed them, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. You paid those people. You paid even uh, the Mexicans. You paid the Indians. How about giving black people that 40 acres in the mirror, not their 40 ounce in a pit bull? But anyway, now... He says that Americans are joy today, which is the white blessing, a.k.a. white privilege. Gigolo, Gigolo, whatever his name, also suggests that using the phrase white blessings instead of white privilege, it don't matter what you want to call it. You can sit up here and go get a zebra. You can try to change the stripes on it, but guess what? It's still a damn zebra. You can go get a duck and paint the duck orange, brown, yellow, pink, whatever. Guess what? When it quack, quack, it's still a damn duck, affleck like that. You know what I'm saying? So all they're talking about, we're going to change it from white privilege to white blessing. That does nothing but anger people right there because it makes people think you're doing what? You're playing with them. And one thing about black people, they hate to be what? Play with. They don't like that shit. But anyway, the pastor's controversial comments came during a sit down with Christian rapper Lecrae. More like almost uh, worldly music Lecrae. I don't have anything against Lecrae or whatever. I just don't really listen to his music or whatnot. I'm more of a traditional gospel uh, music lover when I do listen to gospel. Yes, I do listen to gospel also. You want you want me to name some uh, BB and CC Wines? Uh, what was the, what was the group name? Uh, the Canton Spirituals and stuff like that. Uh, Yolanda Adams. I mean, I listen to quite a few of Marvin Sapnum. So you know, I really don't listen to Lecrae because I really don't like that vibe. But you know, some people do. Anyway, and also Chick Fil A CEO Dan Cathy, and they sat down and had an interview. You know, a whole discussion about what's going on in the culture of America and racism. Now, also, Gigolo has since tried to clarify his statement, admitting his words of choice wasn't great. No, it was horrible, what we call terrible in Charles Barkley's voice. But anyway, now seeking to refer to slavery as a blessing, but that we are privileged because of the curse of slavery. He wrote on Twitter, out of all things to write, how about God bless America, God bless each and every individual. You know, we will make it through this tough time. Instead of talking about what happened back then, how about we come up with solutions to the way we can fix these problems? That's the way you get over this thing. Not sit up here. It's just like if you got a sore on your arm or if you got a sore on your ass or some damn well, and you keep picking up that sore on your ass or your arm, guess what? It's not going to get better. It's going to make it worse because you keep picking at it. But if you go get some almond, some balm or something, and I ain't talking about the B-O-M-B, -B, I'm talking about the B-A-L-M. If you go get some ointment or some treatment and you treat the sore, it will make it better. But if you sit up here instead of picking at the damn problem, it's going to do nothing but do what? Spread and get worse, just like it has in this country. Anyway, and calling it a privilege, benefit, blessing. Word choice wasn't great. Hell no, it wasn't great. Anyway, trying to help us see society is built on the dehumanization of others. You don't think people already see that? You know, even you got, even youngsters see that out there, 15, 16 year old. I mean, damn, I seen that when I was a little kid and stuff. I used to hang posters in my room and everything and stuff about, uh, you know, empowerment and all this. So you don't think adults see that? Yes, they see. But the thing is about people in this world, they see what the hell they want to see. That's just the nature of people. But anyway, he said, my apology. I failed. And that seemed to me that was very sarcastic. Pastor Louis Gigolo, Gigolo, whatever your name. That sounds very sarcastic saying, my apology. I failed. Better yet, how about you use a better uh, choice of words, if anything. Now, anyway, Lecrae and Kathy joined the pastor for the Sunday service, which was streamed online. Speaking to Lecrae, Gigolo began. I feel like on the inside of the church, we are fighting this historical context you talk about. In other words, we love the blessings of the cross, but we don't love to sit in it and realize this is what God is asking me to do, to die to myself and live for him. Whatever context is going to look like for me, according to the clip posted online. But all that's good and dandy right there. But how can you sit up here and uh, profess to be a man of God and also be such Christians? And let me talk to you Christians out there. How can you sit up here and be such Christians and everything when you hate your own brother, when you sit up here and you despise your own brother, you talk about them, you won't even help them out and stuff. You pass down people down the road. I'm not saying that you give everybody that you see homeless or in need some money or, you know, anything. 
But how can you sit up here and talk about you got so much God in you? When was the last time you all helped somebody? When was the last time you just even told them, look, God love you or, you know, it's going to get better. You don't even have to give them money sometimes. You know, it just depends. But if somebody sit up here hungry, don't come up here and tell them to have a nice day or it's going to get better. No, you, you help feed them if you can. Because guess what? You'll take that same dollar, two or three or four dollars, and go what? Go buy you a beer, buy you a cigarette. You do what you want to do with your money. But you'll sit up there and waste that money or you just buy something you don't really need when you can sit up here and help somebody. That's how you do it. You don't sit up here and just talk about it. You be about it. But anyway, let's finish up. He said, while white Americans are aware of the curse that is slavery, the pastor said they missed the blessing of slavery. Now, that right there to me was a total bunch of bullshit right there. I just have to say it just like that. I mean, how are you going to sit up there and call the blessings of slavery? How about you tell all those dead people that died in slavery? How about you wake them up and tell them all that? Or if they come see you in dreams, you tell all them that, that it was a blessing for you to get hung drug and uh, torn to pieces and stuff the women get babies cut out of them and it was a blessing because it made my life better and people that look like me made their life better but anyway he also goes on say that they actually built up the framework for the world that white people live in and lived in and also enjoy every day but at the same time if you sit up here and listen to these pastors and you hang on to every word they say like it's the truth or verbatim you're going to follow them straight to hell you're going to bust hell wide open with them but at the same time, the way that you heal a problem or you make things better is that you treat the problem. You don't constantly talk about the damn problem. It's just like if you got a problem with somebody, they got a problem with you. Not saying that, you know, that's what's going on in this country. But if you have a problem with a situation, how you fix it? You go make it better. If you see a house tearing down or whatever, or it's getting run down, what you do? You go sit up here and put new boards on it, put new paint on it. You work on it. You make it better. You know what I'm saying? You take away the old things that are on it that's causing it to tear down and put new things on it, which means as far as the situation that we're going through in this country is that we find a way, a solution to make the situation right. That's the only way you can make it right. But at the same time, black people should have been got reparations years ago. Everybody else ain't got reparations. I mean, you got Indians who got reserved. They got casinos and all this other stuff. Let's just be for real. That's the thing that a lot of people don't want to talk about. And before I go, the great Colin Muhammad, he was fighting for reparations right before he had passed back in, uh, I think that was 2000, yeah, 2000, 2001. It was one of them. But anyway, you know what I'm saying? You can look that up. But you let me know what you all think. But stop listening to everything these pastors say because some of them just don't have a damn clue. Anyway, you let me know what you think in the comment section. If you like the video, push that like button. If you like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely share this video with your family and friends. Till next time, you all stay blessed. Love one another. Love your brothers and sisters. Because guess what? We all down here on this earth together. Can't none of us go nowhere. But it's quite suspect that, you know, that we don't talk about other certain groups of people. It's always white and black, while the other group control the whole damn world. But anyway, I'm done talking about that. You all stay blessed and stay woke. I'm out.